Are you just working for money? Are you working in an area of your purpose? Now, I'm not telling you to quit your job or anything right now, but I am going to tell you and show you how to get mindful of your mission and how to execute in it. I'm Ricky Jasper, and this is the Chasing a Greater Vision podcast. After getting laid off two times in six months, I realized I had to be chasing a greater vision in my life. I had to be walking into my calling. I spent time building up a successful fitness apparel business, and then now stepping back in front of camera to talk, to speak more, to hopefully inspire you to chase a greater vision in your life. And my goal with this podcast is for us to do it together. So let's make it happen. Welcome back to the Chasing a Greater Vision podcast. I'm your host, Ricky Jasper. Today's episode is something where I feel like I'm talking to myself how to get mindful of your mission and execute on it because I know that sometimes we can just be working for money and just going through the day to day and not really be purposeful or have a level of purpose or be walking in our purpose and and that can be draining. And I'm going to give you four ways to do it. I'm going to run through them real quick and then we'll get into it. Number 1, evaluate your motives. Number 2, identify the character that you want to build. Number 3, master your craft. And number 4, do what you have to do so you can do what you want to do. Now, why all of this is important? Why I feel that I'm tied to it is because uh, making money is a great thing. You can use money to do a lot of great things. But if the if the motive is always just to earn money, then sometimes you end up doing things that you hate. And even if you get raises and promotions and in jobs and in areas where you really don't like or love, you're getting more responsibility doing things that you don't want to like, spending more time doing things that you don't care for to get more money to go back to an area that is draining you and that lacks purpose. Now, I've been there. Uh, if you're listening to this, maybe you've been there. It's not a fun place to be because even once you do get those accolades, once you do get those raises and promotions, it feels good for a day. You're like, oh, this is great. But then that next Monday comes and you realize, oh, I have to go do more of this again. And now I have more responsibility and now I'm putting more time in. And that can be not a fun thing. Now, when it comes to your purpose, you might realize, oh, okay, this is going to take some time on target, which is going to tame, take time off of target on an area where I'm putting that is is going to build my finances. Uh, just a little bit of background about myself. You know, I have been in areas where I've worked multiple jobs on top of running an apparel company and really love doing that. Now, you know, I'm working in the tech space and I'm also doing speaking. I'm also doing podcasting. So podcasting, speaking, this is something that I feel like my purpose is really tied to. I also like building companies and organizations. So working for small companies is something that I really, really love doing because it's another area where I can use my gifts and abilities and I, and I like tech. So it's been a great marriage of sorts, but in the past I've worked for tech companies where I don't, I didn't like what I was doing and it paid the bills. So that's the do what I need to do, do what I want to do. So we'll get into that. But I felt drained every single day. So the purpose of this video is to get you to an area where you're able to work on your purpose and be mindful of that while you're doing the thing that might be paying your bills in hopes that maybe your purpose at some day pays your bills. It might not, but it's going to give you a level of fulfillment. It's going to help other people out because I always feel that God gives you a gift. A gift is used to give to other people. And if you are not using that gift to give to other people, he'll take that and give that to somebody else. So that is my opinion. That's what I think that, that, you know, just, just my, my version of God's gift giving. So it doesn't have to be yours, but that's mine. Now, number one, evaluate your motives, where they map to and why you're doing it. This is important. I use the word audit in probably every video because that is one of kind of the ethos of chasing greater vision. You have to audit a lot of areas of your life because you have to be mindful of why you're doing the things that you do. We can go through and just, just float through life and not really focus on what we're doing and not really focus on why we're doing things. And then all of a sudden you've been there a year, two year passes by and you're like, where did the year go? Where did the month go? Where did the time go? Because real realistically, you're not moving the needle in where you want to go. You're just kind of going through, going along to get along, collecting a paycheck or whatever it is. And that's about it. So evaluate your motives. Look at the things that are allowing you to make money in your life that are taking up the most of your time and evaluate why you're doing them, why you're there. If you're there for superficial reasons, if you're there for reasons that are just to go along to get along, really take a step back and, and ask yourself if that's where you really want to be. If it's not, then I always start with purpose right? What is my purpose on earth? I have a more entrepreneurial spirit. So this may come off. So sometimes when I talk, it may come off as, Oh, start your own business. Not saying that at all. Your purpose can align to different organizations that 
allow you to make money. Your, or your purpose can align to different entrepreneurship. Your purpose can align to nonprofit. Your purpose can align to doing something that makes no money at all, but it's just something you, you love. In all of those, it gives you a level of not only happiness and fulfillment, but an opportunity to be your best to help others the best way that you can to inspire them to live in their purpose. Me doing this podcast, yes, it's to to give advice and everything, but it's also to hopefully show that, you know, hey, down the road when this kicks off, when this really, really ramps up, and even if it doesn't, hey, Ricky was someone who no matter what, he just operated in his purpose. And because he did that, it gives me the airspace to do the same thing. And so that's 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 why you really want to evaluate why you're doing this. Carly and I had a conversation the other day, and, and just to be transparent, she sews and she has a huge sewing page. Um, Mason, go ahead and throw the screenshot up of her sewing page. Un- unbelievable. The reason... I I bring this up is because she knows her purpose is is tied to this. And there's some areas where it's like, hey, there's some fear in stepping into some unknowns and some opportunities. And we really had a conversation about it. And this was earlier. And and I was like, man, how cool would it be if down the road, you know, God willing, we have kids and they're like, oh, that's our mom that did that thing. And she wasn't scared. And, And because she wasn't scared, that gives them the airspace. And it's the same thing with me. I was deathly afraid to really dive into this podcast and into the speaking. But my why was, oh, but down the road, I don't want my kids to sit back and say, oh man, dad was scared to do this, but he's telling me I can do anything. He's telling me I should be able to 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 walk in my purpose, but he never walked in his. Whatever your why is, it's going to open up your mind to opportunities that can get you to where you want to be, that can get you to the spot. Don't just go along to get along evaluate your motives, evaluate where you are, audit where you are, and then make the necessary decisions to get into an area that aligns with your purpose. It will take time. It will take a lot of honesty, but that honesty is going to help drive you to a place that you want to be. Number two is identify the character that you want to build. I literally think of that as, as kind of imagery as well. Like even like, I'm not a big Marvel fan, you know, but, but, but like a character, You want to identify the character that you want to build and you want to start acting as if you're that character because you then will become that character. You will become that person. I am looking at the person that I want to be 10 years from now and I'm saying, what are the characteristics that I want that person to have? What's the purpose that I want that person to be walking into and everything? And so I'm, I'm, I can map that out. What's the, the way that I want that person to be talking to people? What's the type of money that that person wants to be making because they were able to use their gifts. How? What's the impact to other people that I want that person to be doing? And if all of those, I can map all of those out and I can say, well, I might not be able to get all of that. However, what I can do in, in my control, because some of those factors are out of my control, is I can start establishing the habits to be that person today. And if you do that, and if you really identify the character that you want to build, you start building that character. I talk about this on other pot and on other podcast episodes, Wednesdays and Saturdays are my, I call them character building workouts because they're hard workouts. They're very physical outdoor runs in the Texas heat in 90 degrees in the morning and hundred percent humidity along with a lot of other functional rate weight training and everything. And they typically last 90 plus minutes in the heat and it's, and it's rough. My body I know can get through it. My mind is something that I always have to audit and say, can I get through this? But the character that I want to build says, I want to be able to get through these workouts so easily and then be able to just show up to the rest of my day and feel energized. So when I go through these workouts, I don't go with the mindset of, oh man, I'm going to be dragging. I'm going to try to figure this out and blah, blah. No, I go with go into it with the mindset of I am the best athlete for the job out here right now and nobody else wants to be out here but I want to be the one who's going to be out here that's my mindset every single minute that I go through that workout now does that mean that I feel that way that I am that person not necessarily but that's the character that I want to build so the more that I take on that mindset the more that I become that person the more that you take on the mindset of someone who's walking in purpose on someone who's using their God-given gifts and abilities and talents and the more that you actually use them the more you become that person. The more that I'm in front of camera, that I'm talking, that I'm doing this, the more that I become that person and the more people that I help. All of these things align. But if you don't do that, if you don't build that character and you say, well, I'll get there eventually, what daily things are you doing that's going to get you there? That's overnight. It's just not going to happen. Work doesn't do the work for you. And I think that's the 
one of the biggest things that I had to realize myself is just because, you know, you get a job title doesn't all of a sudden mean that you take on all the attributes of that job title. Typically, there's a growing into point. Just because I got engaged doesn't mean that I had all the attributes to be a great fiance. Now I'm still growing into some things. Same thing with marriage, same thing with lifestyle, same thing with everything. You're typically elevated and you might not even have the full attributes to fulfill the fullness of whatever that is. So that work just doesn't get done overnight. The work doesn't do the work itself. It it takes you becoming the character that you have to be to fulfill that area and to fulfill that purpose. So that's number two. Number three, number three, master your craft. I have said this to myself so much, get at bats, get at bats, get at bats. Mastering your craft, whatever it is, is going to be something that's gonna be fun because if it's in line with your purpose and if you enjoy doing it, it's gonna be a fun challenge. Nothing is worse than having a challenge put in front of you that you don't wanna do, that you don't care for, that is for something superficial that even if you need it, you're like, I'm doing it because I need it, but once I get what I need, I'm out. When you are mastering your craft, it's like even when I get what I want or need out of this, I'm like, I'm showing up tomorrow. You know, I love working out. I love all this. My brother and I compete in high rocks and it's like, yeah, high rocks is on a Saturday. I'm back training on Monday. It's not a, oh, I did this thing. Yay. It's like, no, I love doing this. So once I, you know, get an accolade or once we accomplish something, I don't, don't just stop. I'm like, oh, I still want to do it because I still want to get better. When you master your craft and then you give yourself at bats, you just become better. For me right now, to be transparent, is speaking on university level and corporate level, working with a company to get speaking gigs and everything. And I've been putting that off for six, seven months. And the reason being is because imposter syndrome. And I was like, well, what do I have to say? And do I have everything refined? I don't. And I don't 100% know what I'm going to say. And I am crafting it. And I guarantee you the first time I get up there and speak to a big audience and you know company and all this other type of stuff and I've done stuff in the past but now on a consistent level it's not going to be like the hundred times it's not going to be like the thousand time but I have to get one at bat to get two to get three you have to start to get at bats in doing what your purpose is because if your mindset is money and your purpose is something that can be monetarily compensated then the more that you get at bats the more monetary compensation over time will happen for you and the more fulfilled you'll be in walking in your purpose. And again, you'll be monetarily compensated, but getting at bats is going to be the thing that is going to help out. And it, and it takes a level of confidence in, in, in the reality that you might fail. I, I, the reason why I say get at bats is because sometimes you're going to step up to the plate and strike out. That's okay. That happens. Getting at bats is not about being perfect. It's about getting practice. It's about being confident to put your, your best foot forward. It's about really inspiring other people who are watching you. There's always going to be people in the crowd watching, criticizing, yelling, strike and ball and whatever, whatever. That is not your business. Your business is, I want to step up to the plate. I want to have my purpose on front street. I want to do the best that I can. I want to get at bats because my, maybe there's one person in the crowd that's inspired by me being up there and it might be give them the airspace to go and get there at bat too. And that's the positive change that I think that would be great in this world and be great in your community and my community is just being able to inspire people to do things that they're just frankly scared to do, but that they want to do. Number three, do what you need to do so you can do what you want to do. This is kind of tying this whole thing together because like I've said, it can sound very entrepreneurial when it, when you say, hey, don't worry about money and you know, focus on your purpose and blah, all that kind of BS is like, okay, well, some people, it's not a feasible thing. Just upping and quitting your job and then, you know, it, it, yes, for some people it works, but for a lot of people it doesn't work because there's responsibilities, there's things that have to happen and we all have a finite amount of energy and everything. But sometimes doing what you need to do, do what you want to do, or I say all the time, that's, in my opinion, what definitely should be done. Because what you need to do sometimes is stay in the job that is boring, that's not fulfilling, that's just making you money, because what that allows you to do is that can fund your purpose. For me, I left a cybersecurity job to do 413 Health and Fitness. I started an online personal training company. That grew, and then I realized, oh, I really wanna get into apparel. Was living in San Diego at the time, went up to LA, uh, met with a pattern maker and designer, started cutting and sewing apparel to do things custom, create a brand from scratch. That started to grow and I realized, wow, when you are building an apparel company, it's product based, not service based, so it's a lot of money that goes into it. After I hit rock bottom financially, I was like, I need to go back and get a job. Got a job and every paycheck was going to rent and then going into the apparel company. Now, 
I needed to get a job. So I needed to get a job that didn't have to be super passionate about. It just had to pay the bills so that I could do what I wanted to do at the time, which was grow an apparel company and it paid dividends. Right. And then what I needed to do now was after about five years, okay, the apparel company was going really well, but it was also just like just above breaking even and it would, but it was going really well revenue wise. But I was like, okay, but I'm still every, I'm not paying myself, did not pay myself. And so I was like, well, I want to buy a house. I want to get engaged. I really want to speak. So I was like, got to do what I need to do. Hey, have to close this thing down because I have to reallocate some things so we can do this thing over here. Sometimes it's not going to look pretty. Sometimes it's going to be pretty messy and sometimes it's going to come with some hard decisions, but doing what you need to do does not always mean going and quitting a paying job just to go and do your purpose. Sometimes it is, Hey, I'm having this paying job, but at nights, one or two hours, I am doing this. I, I, I'm working my purpose. Hey, sometimes it's what we're doing right here. We're filming this on a Saturday morning. I worked out early and then Mason's here. He has a wife and kids at home. He drives an hour to come be here right now. We do this podcast. We cut time out of our Saturday because this is something that we want to do, something that we want to build that we know, okay, we have to do what we need to do so we can do what we want to do. We have to, we have to get the at-bats and we have to get the reps in. And again, sometimes it's not going to look pretty. Sometimes it's going to take time away from other things in life that are important. But if you're walking in purpose, I always believe that the more that you get at-bats, the more that God will bless you. This is this is something, you know, from a faith standpoint that I believe it's, you know, God can't bless anything that you don't put in his hands. So if you're not putting something, you're not giving him something, he can't bless it. And for me, I had to realize that I was like, man, if I'm not speaking, I'm not trying or whatever, what am I? And I'm praying for all this. He's like, OK, that's great. You can pray for this, but you're not working. You're not giving me anything to adequately bless. And so your purpose will be adequately blessed when you give him something to actually bless, when you give him something to work with. You have to give the the potter some clay to work with. If you don't give him clay to work with, but you ask him to build an amazing sculpture, he's going to look at you and say, with what? I can do it. I a thousand percent can do it, but you're not giving me anything to do it with. So to wrap it all up, focus on your purpose. Number one, evaluate your motives. Number two, identify the character that you want to be. Walk in that, do the things that that character would do because ultimately that becomes you. Number three, master your craft, get at bats, get up to the plate and, and swing and miss and swing and hit and swing and hear the crowd criticize. But at the end of the day, you are on the mound and you are on the plate, not even the mound, you're on the plate getting your at bats. And number four, do what you need to do so you can do what you want to do. You don't always have to quit a job. You don't always have to leave something. What you can do is leverage those resources that you have to do it and to use it in an area that you are purpose driven and that you want to be in, in a direction that you want your life to go in. So to wrap this up, our word of the day is mission. Now this word of the day is something that you can take with you that you can think of on a consistent basis. Mission, be mission mindful. What is your mission in life? Your mission is going to tie to your purpose. I think of life as a mission because it requires a journey that you have to take, that you have to use the tools in your toolkit. Your tools are going to be your gifts. Your gifts are going to be tied to your purpose that you are going to take with you in order to achieve or accomplish that mission. You have a mission. I have a mission. Everybody has a mission. We can sit on the sidelines and just do what we think that we should be doing, but we know we really shouldn't and be doing something that is definitely off target while we have this amazing mission that's going to give us so many memories, so much fulfillment, so much growth. We can ignore that or we can say, hey, you know, this is something in an area that I want to go into and I want to be mission mindset. Every single day I wake up and I and I make decisions. Am I going to go this way towards my mission or am I going to just go this way towards just money and be very not mindful and hopefully acquire a lot of money but not be happy. Your mission can provide monetary value if you're walking in purpose, if you're using money from other areas to fuel your mission, to fuel your purpose. So I hope that this podcast episode helps. If you are struggling with your mission, if you're struggling with anything, please comment, hit me up, DM me. I love having conversations. I love having one-on-one conversations. would love to connect with you. And that's it. And I will see you next time. Peace. Thank you all so much for watching the Chasing a Greater Vision podcast. If you like this podcast, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, send it to friends, use a carrier pigeon, do whatever you have to do. We hope that this inspires you to chase your greater vision in your life and for us to continually and consistently do it together.